Today, I'm going to talk about the Nemesis opening, which is 1014, 2419, and 610. This is not one of my favorite openings. In fact, it's one of my least favorite openings, but it's really important to know. There's a tremendous amount of scope in this opening, but I'm going to focus in on two of the most natural ways to play it from both sides, so it's a little bit easier to grasp. Let's look at this first natural attack. So the Nemesis, again, 1014, 2419, and 610. Naturally, going toward the center is best. We all know this. But here, it's actually a little bit inferior. It's not the best way to play. So this 2218, which looks natural toward the center, it's actually not the best move. It's perfectly sound. This 2217 move is actually best. But this 2218 is just too natural, and you're probably going to see it in a lot of your games. So that's why I'm going to show this variation first. So after the 2218, red is going to just exchange it off to get a share of the center again. taking the double jump, and then jumping back toward the center. And now, again, very natural moves, advancing toward the center from the single corner from both sides. White getting to the center first. This 913 exchange can be played, it's a bit inferior. So instead, moving 11-16 and enticing white to further advance toward the king row, which is what red wants it to do. And it is a natural, good, sound move with 18-15. Red is going to cover up with 1-6. And now again, white is just going to waltz into the king row. I'm going to pause here. This is a good landing to know. It does come up from time to time. And red can cut down this piece by moving 14, 18. White capture. Red capturing this way first. White capturing this way, not this way. Now jumping back here, and now this piece is eliminated with this jump. There are a number of ways to attack here for white, and this 3127 is as good as any. It's as good as 2925 or even this 26-23. At this point, red can safely advance to the 19 square. Again, enticing white to attack it here, but red has this 2-7 just waiting for the 2 for 2 to take this piece back after white goes 27-24. White's going to wait a move, and red is going to wait a move. Again, just waiting for the action to happen here, which it does now. No more waiting moves. 16, 20, and now you can see the two for two here. White is now just going to, again, naturally advance toward the king row. Red is going to do the same. But white is going to pitch a piece here. It's not going to let red go in and wreak some havoc back here. So it's going to pitch a piece. 
lining up the pieces here for, again, another two for two sequence. Red is going to crown, white is going to advance toward the king row, and red is going to start developing its pieces. White moves up here to stop this piece from further advancing. White's going to get a king. Instead of pressing right away, moving here, and now Red can attack the piece on 22, and then press with its king for a really good draw. This game actually took place from the 1976 U.S. National with Don Lafferty handling the red pieces. Let's look at it from the white side, but now actually playing the strongest attack with that 22-17. So again, the opening. And now instead of 22-18, again, very natural, but not the strongest, white can play this 22-17. Now, the reason why it's the strongest is because it further looks to attack red's double corner, and attacking the double corner of your opponent is always one of the main objectives in checkers. So after 22-17, it's best for red to go 9-13. This 11-15 move, it can be played perfectly sound, but I just don't think it's as natural as the 9-13. So after 9-13, White is just going to wait a move and cover up with 28-24. And he double jump. Twenty-nine twenty-five is a move favored by Alex Moiseev, and he actually considers it to be the best and most aggressive move. This 26-22 is also very good, but I do think this 2925 is more natural as well. It's again directed out of the single corner and toward the center of the board and not disrupting the apex piece on 26. Natural moves, 1115 next. Natural development here. And then beginning the flank attack. Now, naturally, the development of 4 8, which is very common in a lot of games will actually lose here by 26-22. And then no matter where red goes next, white can play this binding 23-18 move next. So if your opponents play this, again, very natural 4-8, know that it will lose by 26-22, followed by 23-18. So instead, 3-8 can be played and should be played. And now with 26-22, Red has a safety net of going 11-16 in the future, if it wants, because it has this exchange. It did not have that exchange with 4-8 because you had this elbow here. So after the 26-22, Again, creating columns here with 1-6. And white plays 17-13, hoping for a trap. Now, if red does play 11-16 at this point, it will actually lose in this position. And it will lose by this 21-17 pitch, followed by 22-17. I recommend playing this out just to see how it can lose, but it is a pure loss from red. So instead of the 11-16, it's best to play this 15-18 exchange. Again, all very natural moves. And continuing that way with this 
31, 26, keeping the bridge intact. After 8, 11, 24, 20, and then to wait a move here with 4, 8, and then white is going to wait a move instead of striking right away with 30, 25. Now advancing toward the center is best. Exchanging off. And then 15, 19. Now white is going to go in here to attack the piece on 8, hoping that red will do the same. However, if this sequence happens, white is going to jump and get a king. Red is going to jump and get a king, but you have this elbow here, and after 26-22, it's again a loss for red. So instead of going 19-24, you have this really pretty tactical play here from red. This is a little bit unnatural, but I recommend playing it out so you become a little bit more familiar with the sequence. Red is going to go 6-9. Now, if it jumps with the king first, red has this 18-23. And if white takes this jump, red still has the backing here. And now we have the double jump. There's a couple ways to play this out here. If white goes 2016, looking to further attack the pieces here, red can defend by going 913. And if 1612 is played, you have this 1014 move, double jump, and double jump again. And if white wants to attack the piece on 7, like it's going to do so here, Red has the saving grace with this two for one, which I'm sure a lot of you can see right now. And once again, a really good draw. Okay, let's look at this variation again, but this time you can see it from Red's perspective in case white plays that strongest move of 22-17 early. So 10-14, 24-19, 6-10, and then again the strongest move on the board with 22-17. Playing 9-13 is best. And then white is going to wait with this 28-24. Taking the double jump. And again, this natural and very good 29 25. All very natural moves here. But again, not for eight. It will be very tempting to continue this natural formation, but do not play for eight here, as it will lose after 26 22 and then 2318 regardless of what red does. So be wary of moving 48 in this position with 38 instead being best. And then 16 again creating a very good column here. And again, be careful for 1116 which will lose by the 2117 pitch as I showed previously. So it looks very natural, but it will lose with 1518 instead being best. Now preventing this piece from making any further inroad here with 3126. Again, very natural. Waiting a move and then white waiting move. Now advancing toward the center.
and now we get to this sequence. This move will lose, so it will be very enticing to move to get a king, but this 6-9 key move will draw. So if white gets a king first, Red has this 1823. White can exchange off this piece. And now we have the double jump. And the king. Again, there's a number of different continuations here, all drawable. If white looks to further attack these pieces here, Red can go 913 next as best. And if white does look to get another king, then red has this tactical sequence here, allowing a double jump, but taking a double jump back and getting another king for a draw. This is really just the tip of the iceberg in playing this opening, as there are many, many different variations to it. The two that I show in this video are what I believe to be the most natural ways to play it, so hopefully that can serve as a good starting point if you all decide to play this opening more and more. Thanks, as always, for watching.